our wedding week continues with Weddings in Style by David Caruso. So he popped the question, she said yes, and now she's wearing the ring. So now what? Mm -hmm. David Caruso has tips for the newly engaged on the things to do right now. Now that you're about to say, I do. David Caruso is an event planner and designer. He is here with his expert tips on what to do next. Good to see you. Good to see what you. Is I, up? I loved those resolutions. Did you? Spot on. I really? Loved that. Yep. Okay, and Very I'm sure good. you, Thank you, you for tell this people set again. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Don't do anything for the guest list, right? I that agree. is that a is big very, deal. That is very, very important and definitely on our list of top things, too. Okay, good. So, how do you tell people that you're engaged? Who's first? I would think parents, uh, number one. Well, absolutely, of course. If yeah. they aren't involved in the engagement, like surprise to be there or to be a part of it, certainly make sure that you call your parents, grandparents, real close family, your siblings, you know, close family, best friends call them don't rely on text messages and certainly don't rely on social media no Come like, on. i think that would be rude to find out on social media for your immediate family right don't get too excited it's yeah. a big moment but make sure you you call the right people first yeah. and after you announce this great wonderful news then the number one thing is what pick a date so I think pick a date is important. Of course, that's gonna be a little bit reliant on what's available. Yeah. So also looking at possibilities for venues is, is very close on the list as well. But picking a date has lots of things to do with who you are. You know, yeah. some people really want a summer Warm wedding. Weather. Some people love winter, fall, you know, it's, it's all about what you like, where you are, and what's important to you and your guests. Are a lot of people coming from out of town? Maybe you don't want a winter wedding then. But think about the date, narrow in on the date for sure, and then certainly start looking into your favorite venues so that you have your top pick for where you're gonna have your big day. All right, so figure out the venue and then your guest list. Because the number is important. <laughs> can you can you pick pick a venue before you know the number? Well, it depends. You should have a good idea, idea. going into it okay. for sure. But sometimes the venue does dictate, a, like, kind mm -hmm. of making your decision about what size wedding you're going to have and who's going to be on the list. Mm -hmm. What I will say about the list, yes, it is most important, and make sure that you really narrow down. But don't you know? Don't kind of have an A, a B, and hopefully <laughs> not a C list. I, I don't like the different levels of lists, you know, oh, okay. uh, who is most important and who will be celebrating your big day and make that list real tight. What, okay. okay, and in making it tight, and I bet you have a great answer to this, what's a question to ask yourself as you're discussing mm. with your, your future um, husband and wife? A question to ask yourself as you're going mm. through, should this person be on the list or not? So the question that I like to stick to is, would I, I think we have the same question, would I invite this person to my house for dinner Oh. and invite them back? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's what I like. You know, somebody that you're going to spend more intimate time with. Mm -hmm. You know, for me too, I know this isn't always possible, but uh, I don't like people you don't know at your yeah. wedding. Uh, so that is sometimes a challenge and understandable, of course, but for distant in general. relatives or things that seem obligatory. Exactly. What do you mean people you do, people invite people they don't know? Well, if it's like friends or distant cousins yeah. or people that your oh, fiance okay. has never met, like I think it's kind of awkward to introduce people at your wedding to your new yeah, husband I get it. or wife. Okay. So that's just again, there are exceptions based on family situations. But that's what I would say. Okay. okay. All right, determine a budget. That's a big deal. And now that you know how, what your number of people is. Right. You can kind of maybe start planning that? Absolutely, and the budget is key too. And the reason why it's at the top of my list is because going into meetings with vendors and starting to talk about your dream and your vision for your big day, it's good to give people parameters because yeah. it helps them build to what's affordable to you. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of going in there with no clue, you know, it adds up fast yeah. and you quickly can find yourself kind of in a lurk thinking, oh my, I didn't expect it to be this expensive. So have a good idea of what's comfortable for you. And that means at the beginning, find out, you know, who's contributing? Mm -hmm. Are you paying by yourself or will parents contribute some or kind of pool all of your resources and make sure that you go into it knowing what you have. GoFundMe page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously. And I know you do, you know, higher end weddings, a little more luxurious too, right. but you do I events and such. What are you seeing people setting for budgets or what do you hear as a typical kind of budget? Is there even anything typical? I don't think there's anything too typical, but you will find, I think, it's been a while since I've looked uh, yeah. closely, but I think that in general, the average in our state of Wisconsin 
and you know resources online say it's somewhere between like 30 and 35 that's what I've heard too is average in our area yeah um, so that's just kind of a general uh, but of course it's a lot of money it's a lot of cha-ching yeah it is and the sky's the limit and weddings are you know super popular in terms of personalization and you know, experience factor. Mm -hmm. Now we gave a warning before that you say beware of the internet. So yeah. I wonder what you suggest then as it comes to, or it gets to the point of where you go for inspiration. Right, I think the internet is a fabulous place. I also <laughs> think it's a dangerous place. A deep dark pit. Yes. Stay too long. <laughs> exactly, and I think it can be distracting. Uh, you know, I think, Tiffany, you mentioned earlier about trusting your vendors. Yeah. And this is really key also because the internet is great for finding inspiration, mm -hmm. I agree, but think outside of the wedding world. You know, you can find inspiration anywhere. You know, in a movie, when you're traveling, when you're eating at a restaurant, or yeah. I find inspiration from merchandising when I'm shopping around the mall. You know, yeah. there's all kinds of ways mm -hmm. to find other inspiration. Take pictures on your iPhone. But the internet, I think, is most dangerous because Oftentimes, I know people see pictures of photo shoots or like over the top things that are their dream, but are not really realistic in terms of what's obtainable for usually people's budgets. Yeah. The other thing that the internet is kind of scary. <laughs> You're on, being very nice about yeah. it. Just You're like, here's the deal. You can't afford what you see <laughs> yeah. online. That ain't you. Trust me. The other thing that's kind of challenging is that oftentimes they give planning checklists and planning timelines and do this then yeah. and do this now. And it really scares people. There's and a lot of apps for I, that that are freaking yes, out. Yes, and I have seen I people get freaked mm -hmm. out. Yes. So again, use your live and in-person relationships with the people you've hired to really guide you through the process instead of relying on an online checklist or process. And I'm gonna add this because there's a time then when it comes to interview wedding planners mm -hmm. and designers and other venues, and that's where you come in is when people want some help planning the perfect wedding. So Absolutely, I think that's really important. Don't feel alone. Don't make yourself be out there. You know, oftentimes yeah. brides think that their grooms are gonna be a huge help. And I'm here to tell you, it's a <laughs> rare exception. <laughs> <laughs> when it happens, it's fabulous, but don't feel alone, don't feel stranded, just make sure that you have a good person that you can really trust and have a good time with yeah. as your partner throughout the process to make sure that your style, personality, and dreams really will come to life. Love that. Great like advice, David. Thank, Thank you, you so much, David. Thank Thanks you. for our beautiful set. Yes, we you love it. You did a beautiful it. job so decorating fun. it. Yeah. We love it. Thank, Thank you, you so much.